J. Horowitz with a special edition of Amazing Mets Alumni Podcast. Mel Stoudemire Jr. Mel is my special guest. I, I've, known, I've known your family for close to 40 years. That's crazy, isn't it? I mean... It is crazy, and here we are, right? I'm still in the game. And me too. I am barely. Some great memories, right? I you, mean, you've you, been dear to our family, too. Your, your father was my mentor. I don't know, Mom, but I had shit to tell you. And when when Mel, when Doc and Doug, I used to eat with him all the time, a little Chinese restaurant in St. Petersburg. And at that time, we were trying to shelter Doc, you know, to not let him speak all the time. And I was getting killed in the press. And your dad said, listen, you got to stick up to the player, be on their side. And I used to call him at night. And then one particular writer called me a, a, a Nazi loofah for general for protecting Docs. But I can't tell you how much I appreciated what your dad did for me in the beginning. I mean, he, uh, yeah, you know, as, as you probably got to know my dad, you, you realize that was his side of really caring about people and protecting them. And he was that way with my brother and I. You know, just growing up, and I know he instilled those same, that same care yeah. and love for his players. So it probably felt like it was his responsibility. You know, being a being a dad, and then on your end, just being you know, a friend to me, being a friend to you, being a friend. And to you me. know what? Th those values are are still important in dealing with people. Yeah. And he always took time for for everybody. Yeah, and you know that. You know what I remember, Mel? I don't think they do it today. Is it? I know what you do with. He always used to warm his pitchers up in a, in bullpen, and and I mean, and I, he treated all the guys differently. Darling, Doc, Ojeda, you know, Sid. He had a different way of approaching. And your job, I mean, eleven years as a pitching coach, you do you take some of the principles that your dad taught you? And, and oh, every day. You know, it seems like in in the conversations, there's times I got to take a step back, and it's like, man, that that sounds like dad, but. I refuse, Jay, to get back behind the plate and catch these guys. You're not going to do that in anymore? In this day, there's no chance. You know, guys have le really have less command. There's less pitch makers in the game. Yeah. And they're nasty. I mean, I don't want to go back and catch Sandy Sinker and then have him turn and throw a slider the other way or, you know, Cabrera's 94-mile-an-hour changeup. It's, it's guys, are, guys are nasty. But uh, I used to. And understanding of the value of being on that other end and getting feedback yeah. from the pitchers is is valuable. Now you you were about mid early twenties in eighty six. What do you remember about that time with uh, with Ronnie and and you know, Dwight and everything? Well, you know, I did, I, did, I spent a little bit of time in the off season just talking with my dad about those players and what they meant to right. to him and and really, you know, my mom used to tell me that. In the summer, that was that was his kids away from home, and I knew what she was talking about. Just and how he he dealt with them, how he cared for them, how he loved them, and the trust that come with that relationship. So, uh, we obviously, my brother and I, Todd and I, knew how good special those guys were, you know, from a from a pitching standpoint. But it was the other things that he talked about that maybe openly he didn't share with the public. You know the struggles of of players, their limitations, their deficiencies, right. and and all those things. But he loved them. He with all this stuff with Doc, he always stood by Dwight, and I always Dwight, I always appreciated Mel's support. You know, on and off the field. I mean, he was well. You know, I, you know, my, you got to remember, my dad was a player, and he came up as a young right. player. I think twenty two years right. old when he got to the big leagues. So he knew the struggles. You know that that the players were going to endure. He knew what they were up against, and you know what the outside world was going to look like outside the game of baseball, and and some of those struggles they were going to they were going to face, decisions they were going to have to make. So he was a parent in a sense, you know, other than a, you know the coach between the lines. But he he took interest in and care in them, and I he always had great advice, and he was that way around our household too. You know, it's it's it was his job to make sure that they knew what he felt, you know, and, and ways to navigate things. And he was a master at it, man. I get, I have one quick story about your mom. I'm probably going to screw it up. It happened in front of our clubhouse. Rod Dato was there, okay? One of you guys didn't make the team, and I forget what it was. It was the Olympic team. The Olympic team, and your mom went after oh, him. Boy. Your mom went after him pretty good, right? I mean, she stuck that, up with it. 
That's mom. You know, if, if and you knew dad, he yeah. was such a level headed yeah. would deep thought before he reacted and yeah. then there was my mom. Man. Yeah. <laughs> People don't realize how competitive and athletic uh, of a woman that she was. Yeah. Still to this day, Jay. At the end but of the I game. remember she and Rod Dato, people don't know, you know, coach at USC, one of the top coaches. And who was it? You didn't make the team or so yeah, that that was the eighty four Olympics. Right. And uh I got I got cut like the very last right. last cut. And of course she disagreed with the decision yes. like she always does. And she always has an opinion. So yes. it was great. I was not afraid my... to express her no, her you know, thoughts. So um I digress for one second. One met pitch you're very familiar with Matt uh, Max Scherzer, you were with him in Arizona. Did you think he would get to this point when he, he was a reliever when he came up? Right there? Well, you know, he was a starter when he came up, but he got put in the bullpen uh, there for a little while in Arizona. And with, with, you know, no other intentions of letting him settle in and go through some of the things that young pitchers go through. And it was a really unconventional way in this day and age to do things and let guys groom out there a little bit. We saw Atlanta do it with Strider. But to answer your question, there was no doubt in my mind that he was going to get where he is today. Absolutely no doubt. Just from his work ethic, his tenacity, he's bright. You know, he was stubborn but open. And I, I knew he was going to push whatever that seating was going to be, and he was going to get there. Uh, I've got one over here with, you know, with Miami that is kind of falling along the same guidelines uh, in, in Sandy. It's yeah. wired a little bit the same uh, internally, right. but maybe doesn't express himself as much as, as Max does. So, Do you, do you buy, had a by play with Max through the years when you got to different teams, or is it hard with your job? And, and you know, I, I always stop and say hi to Max. He's... Uh, I've always stood back and still admired him trying to get better as a pitcher and pushing himself. You know, that was the one thing with him that I very quickly realized, like, this guy's going to push himself to the top. And it wasn't going to take me putting my foot, you know, in his butt to drive him. He That part was already there, and, and Sandy's a lot like. So, you know, along the way, I've always – kind of just stood and admired and watching him run in the outfield and, and work and talk with other pitchers and to to be able to take the time and, and groom the young guys coming up. It's so, so valuable. You, you and your brother Todd were kind of with divergent paths. You, what, 11, 12 years as a pitching coach or Todd, you know, I didn't really, he won close to 140 games in the major leagues. I mean, you, you went the coaching route and Todd, the yeah, I was forced to go to the coaching route. You know, I ended up having seven surgeries. That's right, I remember. Between my shoulder, my that, elbow. That could be a little bit of a hindrance. My, 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 my knee. So uh, I've been very – I'm well-versed in injuries and getting guys back. And, you know, I learned a lot during those times on the disabled list. Right. And I, I was able to spend more time with my dad from a coaching standpoint. Uh, he knew I was going to coach. I didn't. At the time, you know, I was still trying to, to push through the injuries and play. And my brother certainly had a nice career and did some great things in the game, won a world championship and was part of some important teams. And Your, your dad, I forget what he, he pitched for 11 years with a, like a below three ERA. And then he got hurt. What was the injury? I forget what his injury was. He had a rotator cuff right. injury. And so back then, you know, when you had shoulder injuries, it's uh, the chances of coming back were, were very slim. And, and to this day, there's, it's still a tougher injury to come back from an elbow. So, you know, he, he wasn't – dad really – he was still – I feel, felt like he was still in his prime. You know, he still had some good years. So, you know, in the world of people, they talk to refer to him as a Hall of Fame pitcher. You know, he pitched on some lean years with the Yankees. The Yankees weren't good in the 60s, they, right? They, they, weren't, they weren't good, you know. Right. I remember one year he went 12 and 20 with a – Two something right. ERA and was among the the ERA leaders in the league. So, the following year he won twenty four games. So, uh, pitched on some lean years and really pretty really good hitter too. One, I got five hits in the game one time. Went five for five one time against the uh, the, the Senators, I right. believe, Washington. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I think fifty years ago, maybe or something like that. 
just a couple of days. What's your roots in you? Any you know, when you come back to New York, good memories for you, Mel? I mean, Great memories. You know, what's really uh, eerie. I use the word eerie and sometimes emotional is I, I walk, you know, yesterday I spent some time walking the same streets, you know, that my dad spent a lot of time in New York, uh, just people watching. And when I was with him, you know, at the end of seasons, just to hear people call his name out and recognize him on the street, realized how special he was and how special this place is. And we got some great memories here, you know, here here in New York that are going to go with me the rest of my career. I remember the rest of my life, Jay. When and he was sick for a long time, he kept battling and battling. I remember I saw him one time in the hospital, and I was so petrified. When I was when Mel, yeah, with blood. What was the exact blood disease? I forget the. He exact. had my uh, multiple myeloma, and he was all covered up, and I dropped my gloves. And I, I was started to cry. I said, oh, when I, I was remember, I said, what did I do? You know, your, your dad started to laugh, but he battled a long time, right? I mean, we, oh man, that was my dad. It was yeah. that German blood. But, yeah. You know, he he went 20 years with that disease. Yeah. And I remember getting the call from my mom, and you know, they were they were talking about two to three years with you know life expectancy, and he always talked about you know just living another day and and trying to find a cure, mm -hmm. and he battled that thing right to the end. And to be honest with you, it, it really wasn't the myeloma that got him. You know, he got got pneumonia, got an infection in there, and and so, uh, yeah, we learned a lot, a lot to learn from just watching him as a person fight that disease and what he what he was up against. He meant really meant so much to me. I was in the early '80s, a young kid out of college, and he told me it was like to exist in a locker room, how to deal with players, deal with the media. And he also had a kind of a devilish side. One trip to Houston, we went to Gillies. Uh, the, but he somehow persuaded me with Bobby Wine, one of the you, other coaches. Did you go, get? Did you get on it? I did get on it, and I <laughs> fell off. I almost broke my leg. You got to get on the horse. <laughs> so I got on the horse, and Bobby Wine and Dad were laughing him behind off at me, and I fell off. And I mean, and he used to play practical jokes, but I mean, but. He, he meant so much to me in my community. That my was the honor you side of my dad. Yeah. And he was a prankster. Yes. He, I mean, he, he definitely though. set you up, Jay. Huh? I'm, he set you up. I'm an easy victim, though. Well, he set you I'm, up. I'm an easy victim. You know what, Jay? He, he loved you. Yeah, I mean, I... He, he talked, you know, it, it's... He, besides his players, he talked about you a lot. Yeah, right. And, and, and I try so to stay I'm, in touch through the years, you know, and I he's can call your mom now and just let him know, you know, and I always... That's do, what baseball does. Yeah. It creates a... You yeah. know, you... you I try. I try to take that, you know, those those values that and that love for people, and make sure that I take the time to to do the same and, and treat people that I work with that same way because they're important. They're important. We well, got to be proud of what you've done in my. I mean, through the years, we got a great staff here in Miami, and you know, it, I'm, I'm sure the future is bright for the pitching staff and a lot of good guys. And uh, you got to be proud of what you did. Listen. I appreciate your friendship, Mel, and I'm gonna call your mother tonight, let you know we spoke, and I miss Jean, and we keep in touch with her, and uh, good friends, and your dad was something special to me, and the whole style of my family something yeah, special to me. You're, you're, you're a great friend, and yeah. your name goes a long way in our family. We well, love you, Jay. Thank you, Mel, appreciate it. Thanks for your time, appreciate it. All right, my man. Mel.